Welcome to our Fine Arts Academy Showcase. Thank you for joining us in the virtual realm to honor and celebrate our Academy students. The theme of this showcase is roots. Roots are defined as the part of the plant which attaches it to the ground or to a support, typically underground, conveying water and nourishment to the rest of the plant via numerous branches and fibers. Tonight, you'll be seeing our level two, three, and four students perform and share their artistic work in the fields of dance, music, visual art, creative writing, and drama. While we are disappointed that we can't all be together in the auditorium watching these students on the stage, we are proud of the obstacles they have overcome to create meaningful and powerful art and performances. For many students, their showcase had to be drastically reimagined to fit this virtual format. They demonstrated flexibility, creativity, and patience as they navigated each barrier. We'd like to give special recognition to our eight awesome seniors who are appearing in their last showcase. We have enjoyed watching you grow as artists, performers, and people over the last four years. Thank you for allowing us to be part of your journey and for your immeasurable contributions to the Fine Arts Academy. Grab a bowl of popcorn and prepare to be amazed and inspired by the Harrisonburg High School Fine Arts Academy students in their final showcase of the year, Roots. This being my final showcase at HHS, I found the theme of Roots to be quite fitting. For me, this theme allowed me to honor the roots that have been planted in the HHS stage and theater department in my life. Those roots were planted years ago when I was cast in my first show as young Cosette in Les Miserables. Similar to many of my peers, the vision of my showcase changed with recent events not allowing for a live performance. However, I was determined to honor the show that rooted my love of theater while showing the growth that this department has drawn from me as an artist. My piece today will be accompanied by a rendition of I Dreamed a Dream, a song that is not only from the show Les Mis, but was also the performed piece in my very first showcase in the Academy. To show my growth as an artist, I arranged a guitar and bass part performed by Leif McCoy and Jaden Graham, as well as an additional vocal line. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the teachers that continued to inspire my growth in high school. Ms. Amber Corston, Bethany Howth, Stanley Swartz, Ken Gibson, and J.R. Snow, I'm incredibly thankful for all of your hard work. And there are 
The original reason I love dance came from a passion for performance. However, as I continue my dance journey, I have grown to love choreographing and the creative side of dance instead. My piece is divided into two distinct sections to contrast my past dance self and the roots of why I love dance versus what I have grown to love about dance now in the present. In the first section, you will see movement inspired by my I Am Showcase set to music from that showcase because my I Am Showcase centered around the idea that my love for performance defined me as a dancer. In the next section, you will see me creating the movement you just watched and enjoying the choreographic process to represent what I love about dancing now in the present. German style dress inspired by my great grandmother and things from my childhood. I do this because when I think of the same roots, I think of heritage and a foundation which things can be built and grown upon. The dress that I created is based off of one that my great grandmother owns, just to make sure it's clear my great grandmother is still alive. The dress is originally I was going to make the dress for myself, but then I ultimately decided to make it for one of my first stuffed animals. I thought this would be more fitting because my great grandmother used to make outfits for this stuffed animal. There are 12 daisies on the dress. They represent my 12 years in Girl Scouts because of how much Girl Scouts have influenced me throughout the years and helped me grow to become who I am. Thank you. I'm Grayson and for my showcase I decided that I was going to reach out to my English teachers over the years to really reconnect with my writing roots. I've written for as long as I can remember and so I had each of my teachers come and write a part of a prompt that I have given them to create one long story that not only ties together my roots um, with my favorite teachers and also the type of writing that I enjoy. It was really hard to see the story going where I didn't want it to go, but I think overall in the end I am very proud of the outcome, especially after I finished it up and edited it on my own. Someone keeps leaving you messages. They text you, email you, message you on Facebook and the like for an entire month. Then you get a letter in the mail from the same cryptic username, Deus Ego Sam. As I scramble back underneath my grandmother's quilt, I shudder and stare silently at the damning text message on my iPhone. I glance towards the torn letter from yesterday's mail still on the table by the back door. 
The lined paper held the same words that have landed on each of my screens at all hours of the day and night over the last 31 days. How does this person know? Who can I trust enough to tell when I cannot even trust myself? Is this really happening? I feel like the letter is taunting me, tempting me to pick it up and reread it, overanalyze the words and obsess like I always do. I feel cold chills run up my back and I resist the urge to jump up and rip the letter into tiny shreds. It's handwritten, tiny neat letters side by side, as if written with great care. I am sure there is something familiar about it, the way the cross and the T connects to the H with the little loop, and how the four short sen sentences lack any kind of punctuation, like the writer couldn't have been bothered. Heart pounding, I jump up quickly and snatch the letter off the table. I run back to the couch and dive underneath the quilt as if on fire. As if on cue, there is a sudden fast tap on the front door. For an instant, I am paralyzed right where I sit. I have let paranoia and fear take over. Who could it be? A courier with one more letter or something else? Perhaps it's just an ordinary visitor stopping by to see me. Without further hesitation, I summon the courage to go to the door. I open it slowly, only to find no one. I breathe a momentary sigh of relief. I peek out cautiously to investigate the cause of the tapping, and it catches my eye. On the corner of the stoop lies another, somewhat larger envelope. I quickly pick it up and retreat back inside. The envelope, a plain orange envelope like any you see at the post office or the office supply store, felt heavy in my hands. I contemplated crawling back onto the couch to hide while I opened, but I wanted it nowhere near the safety that was my grandmother's quilt. Instead, I went to the kitchen and sat the envelope down. I stared at it as though waiting for it to tell me it was okay. I knew it wasn't. There was only my name and address on it. The same tiny, neat letters side by side, so carefully written. I began to putter around the kitchen. Tidying up this, putting away that, straightening up this, cleaning that. All the while, the thing seemed to stare at me. Orange. Rectangular. Menacing. This is absurd, I fumed. Grabbing a knife, I slid the blade under the fold and sliced the paper cleanly, dumping out the contents of the envelope all at once, as if to rip off the band-aid. I gaped at what I saw before me, my heart leaping into my throat, seeming to cut off all air. Bracing my hands on the countertop, I leaned forward, peering at what laid before me. The photographs were older and from a different time. A time before me, before I became who I am. They were shadowy and a little grimy, but their contents were clear. I immediately felt little sparks of crackling electricity on my back and stood straight up. That feeling that I wasn't alone, even though I knew differently. The perverse feeling of paranoia when your privacy has been violated and you feel like a shadow is there now, watching you. In my mind, I began to replay my memories, quickly flipping through the events in my life that took place between these pictures and now. So much has happened and changed. How long has this person been watching me? And why are they choosing to torment me now? My chest tightened. I was suffocating. Breathe, I told myself over and over again. Think, think, think. I paced around the kitchen. I picked up the photos again. Despite their condition, it was clearly me, younger, bolder, meaner. Before, I went to seminary school and found this righteous path to be the first female pastor in my growing town. Now I could almost feel my distant anger returning, my body tense as my grip tightened around her neck. Though the photo wasn't clear, I could see the look of fear in her eyes, hear her gasping for air as her nails dug into my arms. I dropped the photos and jumped back, gasping for air. Who had been there? Who had taken these photos so long ago? I hurried back to the living room and grabbed the letter. The spirit of truth and the spirit of justice are one, it read in tiny neat letters. Then it hit me. The handwriting. It was hers. Just like in the notes she used to leave me. I couldn't breathe. Impossible. She was dead. I had felt her spirit leave her body. I had buried her. There in the stack was a photo to prove it. I felt my hand where the splinter from the shovel had been so many years ago, a reminder of my deed that took months to heal and disappear. But how could she have written the letter? Then the name caught my eye. Deus ego sum. I am God. I raced through the house, securing the doors and windows before cowering under the quilt. I found myself laughing at my own absurdity. 
If God was looking for vengeance, windows and doors would not stop what was coming for me. I pulled the quilt over my head. The light of the living room was muted beneath the quilt, but I could see between the fibers. The shadows of the living seemed to dance and bend in harmony with the noises of the light outside. My eyes tried to fool me, seeing new shapes here and there, darting from corner to corner. My breath quickened. My fingers clenched the worn edges of the quilt, and now my entire being was officially working against me. I was locked into a trembling fear, frozen beneath the quilt, unable to speak or move despite seeing her shadow materialize across the room as if she had been there the entire time. She was facing me, staring across the room. The edges of her outline faded in the darkness of the living room. She did not move or make any noise, but I could feel her eyes on me. How? I felt the deep, perverse need to look at her, to come out from under this phantom barrier and see the woman for whom I had dug a grave all those years ago. As if someone else controlled my hands, someone bolder, I pulled the quilt from over my head and turned to face the shadow. But it could not be a shadow. She was too vivid, too real. Her thick eyebrows too clear, even in the muted darkness of the room. Her skin was not transparent. In fact, I could almost feel it soft, clean, giving under my fingers. Impossible. Only a specter could be so silent. In life, she had been vivacious, with a laugh that carried over even the most crowded of rooms. At night, when I tried to sleep, she had regaled me with the tales of the day's minutiae, chuckling at her own observations. Even as she brushed her teeth in the morning, she would yell to me about her plans. This could not be her, this silent presence. And yet, as she walked towards me, I knew it was her. I felt it, the joy, the horror of seeing her again, and I was paralyzed in it. Could it be nothing but my need to hear her again, filling up the silence in my house? With the vision of my late girlfriend standing silently in the corner, I realized how much I missed her. I missed her every day. I had made a bad decision all those years ago. She didn't have to die. What had I been thinking? Thoughts that I should have had when I killed her flooded my mind now, and I felt the quilt fall to the floor as my body went limp. Deus ego sum. I am God. Was God punishing me now? Had I killed the love of my life in the name of a God who was now angry with me? I thought I was doing what he asked. Leviticus 18.22 I had prayed to this God when I felt her life leave her body, pleading with him that I was doing the right thing. I had not been doing the right thing. Out of all the showcases I have done, Roots has been the most challenging and diverse out of all the things I have created. Though I have evolved a lot as an artist in the last couple of years, I have forgotten where I came from in art, which is what I wanted to commemorate with this showcase. When I was little, I thoroughly enjoyed ID and creating art because it gave me joy. However, as time went on, I stopped creating art because of my involvement in school and sports. I got back into art in seventh grade because it was used as a calming tool for me in a time of a lot of stress and a lot of family issues and financial instability. Because of that, I got back into art in eighth grade and since then have been creating a lot of art. However, since eighth grade, I've been taking my art more and more seriously and been worrying more about the product and less about the process. I've done this because I feel that I still had to prove myself as an artist and that I'm not deserving of that title. For this showcase, I want to step away from that mentality and go back to where it all started. For my showcase piece, I created a sculpture out of air dry clay and painted on top of it with acrylic paint. The piece was based off of childhood art drawings that I found in my basement, and I incorporated these drawings into a final sculpture. For the sculpture, I wanted to mix together the style that I have now and the style that I used to have then. I was heavily inspired by the installation artist Alexa Mead, who paints on top of people and makes them look like paintings. I wanted the sculpture to look more two-dimensional than three-dimensional, which is why I incorporated quite a lot of brush strokes on it. Some of the problems that I ran into while creating this piece was creating an armature for it, which is a structure that holds the clay together or makes it stand up and since I didn't have any of that lying around I used some pencils instead for the stems of the flowers that you see. Some other issues I ran into were just technical issues with clay and drying and such. Over this entire process of creating this piece 
I have learned that I shouldn't be so obsessed with the final product and that I should care more about the process of creating art. And now while roots are where we come from, they're not necessarily where we grow to. And that while roots are the foundation for where we are, we should accept them for what they are, but we should also learn that we can grow from them. Thank you. Hi, for my showcase, I decided to make a dance based on memories. For me, things like my childhood and memories really define who I am. I believe that they are my roots. In this video, you will see me dance in three different locations that are very special to me. You will also see videos of past memories with some of my friends. The song I will be dancing to is called Ribs by Lord. I would like to thank my mom for helping me out with the showcase. This project was definitely a challenge, but I'm very excited to share. I hope you enjoy. I was really excited when we got the showcase theme roots because I'm very family oriented and I knew that I wanted to do something for my family and for my heritage. So I chose the song Stand Up because it's a song about standing up for what's right and getting through tribulations. And my family, my dad is mixed with white and African American and my mom is mixed with white and Native American. So I wanted to do a song based on what my ancestors had to go through and the obstacles they had to overcome to get to where they are now. I also created a slideshow showing these things. I would really like to thank Sarah Hamilton for doing the piano part, as well as Bethany Kleindance for singing with me. Thank you and I hope you enjoy. I've been walking with my face. 
face turned to the sun. Weight on my shoulders, a bullet in my gun. Oh, I got eyes in the back of my head, just in case I have to run. I do what I can when I can while I can for my people. While the clouds roll back and the stars fill the night That's when I'm gonna stand up Take my people with me Together we are going to a brand new home Far across the river Can you hear freedom calling Calling me to answer Gonna keep on keeping on I can feel it salvation and I'll fight with the strength that I got until I die so I'm gonna stand up take my people with me together we are going to a brand new home far across the river can you hear freedom calling calling me to answer gonna keep on keep When I heard the showcase theme Roots, my mind went immediately to my family. They have acted like my roots my entire life. They have helped me grow and have shaped me to be the person I am today. I remember growing up listening to the Beatles with my granddad and my dad, so I decided to ask them to play one of my favorite songs for me, Blackbird. I will be singing and dancing. My dance shows the many different ways that my family has shaped me. You'll see me descending down the stairs, and each step represents a different person in my family and what they have done to shape me. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy.
Japanese animation, anime, and comics, manga have contributed to the development of my art. My roots originate from anime and manga, however, several factors contribute to being the soil, light, and water to my art. This piece perspective has made me look back to the individuals and objects that has led me to the path of an artist. For me, personally, I chalk it up to three events, meeting Carla, Dasha, and technology. See, I grew up in a small town in Iowa, and since I'm half Russian, people in my grade thought at the time that I was like some kind of polyglot. So one day this girl, Carla, approaches me and she holds up this Japanese comic and I'm like, huh. And she tells me to translate it to English. And that was my first introduction into manga and anime. And that led me through the rabbit hole. Several years later, I met a girl named Dasha in Russia. She could draw amazing anime art. This was a huge eye-opener to me because I saw someone my age do amazing art. It made me question what I was doing with my life. Technology has contributed to my art because without it, I would have never found more anime or drawing tutorials. With all these contributors, I grew into the artist that I am today. However, it does sadden me that Carla and Dasha will never know the impact that they made on my life because I lost all communication when I moved to Virginia. I drew this in an anime style to connect to the art that got me into art. I decided to draw Carla and Dasha in the picture. Carla is the one by the bookshelf and Dasha is the one who is watching me draw. I made this piece digital to pay tribute to how technology has affected me. I decided to show the roots of this piece. So in order to do that, I decided that I would layer and morph all the sketches, the ruler perspective, the guides, the base sketches of all the girls into the piece. I wanted everyone to see the process of this piece, and this simultaneously contributed to the depth of the piece. Now, I actually had a collaboration in this piece with AI. Now this was an experience. Um, it didn't color things well at all, but I merged with my own coloring and together I feel like technology and I have made a piece together. <laughs> now the piece itself is very tangled in some parts and messy, just like roots. I often find myself reminiscing in my memories of the past and that finds me into the void of wishing that I could see these people again and tell them how much they have impacted me. So that's why I have drawn myself in an anime style, reaching out and looking at my memories. Thank you and have a nice day. As most of us know, my father is a shunned Amish man and I know nothing about the Amish other than the reality TV shows that he's been on. So I decided to take this opportunity to delve deeper into my Amish roots and better understand my heritage on that side of my family. I specifically was attracted to the topic of rumspringa, which is basically an Amish term for teenage rebellion, and I decided to compile some of the terminology I had learned and information that I had gathered into a monologue about a young girl who is going through rumspringa and is trying to decide whether to stay with her family or leave the Amish forever. Through this project, I've obviously learned about problem solving, as I think we all have through this whole experience, and I've also learned to understand my family members and why their actions have been the way they are, although I still don't agree with some of the choices that they make in the way that they treat others. I think that I have a better respect for their religion and their practices, and I hope that this can carry me into more research about my family later on. Father and mother have been talking about my special friend for weeks. I mean, mother even began speaking about how wonderful it is once you are married to your eternal partner in the eyes of you, father. I, I can't help but feel guilt consume me every time I see how happy it makes her. Months ago, Ruby Fisher and I went to a service at a local Mennonite church. We borrowed the English clothes that she had hidden in her family's barn and took the car that her brother had parked outside. Look, it was, it was my fault for getting involved with a girl who was so reckless, but I thought I could walk that thin line without falling into her ways. During the final hymn, I made eye contact with this, with this boy in the front pew. I, I felt guilty for the giddiness that overtook me, so I closed my eyes and I tried to focus on your word, but it, it was too late because Ruby had already taken notice. I, 
As soon as the service was over, I dragged her out of the church as fast as I could to avoid any more shame. But she had somehow forgotten the keys inside the church, so we went back inside, and I guess the boy had noticed he, he came over and introduced himself. His name was Cain, and he invited us to come to a youth group meeting that week. I, I, was, I was going to say no, but before I could, Ruby told him we would be there. I was in over my head. So that next Wednesday, we, we put on the English clothes and borrowed the car, and it actually ended up being a very pleasant experience. We, we laughed, and we, we talked about so many things, and we even danced to music. Kane's kindness helped me feel welcomed. Ruby and I continued to go to these meetings, and outside of them... Cain and I began spending time together. Lord, I know that it isn't what my family thinks is right, but he's shown me a world beyond my wildest dreams. And just a few weeks ago, he taught me how to drive his van. We drove through the back roads for hours and talked about everything under the sun. Once we pulled back into the church parking lot, he, he kissed me. And it wasn't the first time that... But now I, I have to deal with my parents talking about my baptism and how I'm going to be married to a good Amish man and I can't help but feel like a fraud. Father, I love my family. I truly do and I do not want to be shunned, but I, I cannot spend the next 60 years of my life living a lie. I know that it isn't what you would want, but I've, I've learned that you are forgiving. And I hope you will forgive me now. In a few months on my 18th birthday, I will be following Cain as he transitions to college. We, we found an apartment in Allentown, and we've grown so close. I have to leave my community. I, I, can't, I can't do it anymore. I hope that you will be with me in this next step of my journey, Lord. Amen. So for this showcase, I decided to create a watercolor and um, drawing pencil a piece about the broad um, meaning of roots. Um, last showcase, I decided, well, a bunch of showcase, I decided to make them personal, make them about me, make them about my past, my nationality. So I decided to think about South the Box and do something different with it. And that's what I came up. My piece was inspired by all my findings about what it was the meaning of roots in different nationalities and religions and stuff like that. Roots, the main meaning of roots was, of course, past and purity and uh, simplicity. But there was another one that I found really interesting. That was the idea that soul connects, well, the soul stays in the body thanks to invisible roots. So I was trying to find the place where the soul lives and it was the head and the heart. So I decided to draw a skull and a heart and everything, well, the silhouette of a body was made of roots. And decided to draw with watercolors the aura of the person, aka me, and decided to draw like a purplish a uh, bluish pinkish aura that represents the soul and stuff like that. Hope you like it. <laughs> my showcase is a reflection on my personal and musical roots. I wanted to honor my growth and those who have helped me along the way, even if I can't do so by traditional means this year. Two musical themes from my beginning music books are the roots of the two main melodies. As my composition develops, I also included motifs from four other influential pieces of music. I used home videos of myself growing up and performing music to illustrate my development over the course of the piece. Through the process of creating this showcase in a difficult time, I have found that journeying back to my musical roots has helped me to reclaim my love of music.
Hello, my name is Jessica Lawson and I am a junior in the drama strand of the Fine Arts Academy. And for this showcase, I decided to write a piece about a boy named Derek who grows up to be a sociopath. During the piece, an older 16-year-old Derek reflects on his childhood as he has seen growing up and his condition becomes worse. The reason I chose to write about sociopathy is because it is connected to the roots or the childhood of the person with the condition. Because of the coronavirus, I decided to draw a comic following my story with video game style text boxes at the bottom that show the script. Doing digital art was very new to me and a challenge to figure out. And although my drawings may not be perfect, I know that they accurately convey the emotions and the message I am trying to convey.
Hello everyone! I decided to focus on what roots create rather than roots themselves, thus creating my piece name, Up From The Ground. I have always found joy in nature, so I wanted to share that with people. To do this, I created 16 4x4 watercolor and pen pieces of different flowers. Some of the paintings have poems in the background. Each of the poems are by Shel Silverstein and come from his book, Where the Sidewalk Ends. I chose this book of his because my mom used to read it to me as a kid. His poems are often happy and lighthearted, which adds to the idea of spreading joy. For my process, I would first create the background of my piece. If it had a poem, that would go first. Then I did a watercolor layer. I tried to pick background colors that would complement the flower and make it stand out more. Then I would do a pen layer over that. I didn't have too many problems or challenges with this showcase because for me, the process was more about enjoying the art I was creating rather than trying lots of new things. I hope that each of my little paintings brings you a bit of joy. Thank you. So my showcase is based on the roots of my creation process. This usually begins with me finding specific movements that I'm inspired by and definitely want to include. Um, just having little moments of frustration and definitely moments of productivity and then finally reaching a product that I feel confident and proud enough of to share. So I took brief recordings of almost all of the times that I choreographed for this showcase and then a final recording of my finished movement to accurately show my process visually. My Roots Showcase depicts this process through a video that identifies all of these important aspects in my personal creation process. I try to reach you, I can't hide How strong the feeling when we dive Across the ocean of my mind I wonder healing with the soul All my senses intensify Whenever you and I would dive Across the ocean of my mind you push me down, down Gina and I have had an interesting relationship because I've been one of the victims of her anger multiple times. I will admit that my anger has gotten out of control in the past, but I believe that I have grown since then and been trying to make up for it. Due to this, our relationship has been tainted and has affected others around us. We are both juniors, so we wanted to mend our issues before Capstone next year. So we decided to collaborate on this showcase in an attempt to ease some of the tension surrounding our relationship. For my portion of the project, I decided to create a high-low ball gown, which symbolizes our relationship. The dress is high-low to mimic how our history has had highs and lows. The fabric I chose is muted colors with hints of metallic colors to symbolize how although we have a dark past, the showcase serves as a diamond in the rough. We both became friends through sewing and through ragtime fabric back in elementary school. So that's why I decided for my art piece, I would create a dress and sew it. I decided to sing a song called Rescue by Lauren Daigle, because much like this showcase, this song is about forming bonds with others. I decided to add a second vocal part to my track to symbolize how there are two sides to every story, especially the one I have with June. We also decided to create a music video to display our art. We both created separate video clips to metaphorically represent our story, and then I edited all of the clips together and laid the video over my vocal track.
Through the showcase, we have begun to mend our wounds, and I hope that this process will continue to take place and grow as we both mature in the future. Thank you for watching, and we hope you enjoy our showcase. You are not hidden. There's never been a moment you were forgotten. You are not hopeless. Though you have been broken, your innocence stolen. I hear us for underneath your breath. I hear your rest, oh S, your rest, oh S. And I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true, I will rescue. There is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be your shelter. I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your S, O S, your S, O S. And I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true, I will rescue. showcase I decided to write a memoir on my life. Up to this point, I decided that it would be a good reflection and show who I am, where I came from, and how I got to be who I am today. I decided to write a three and a half to four page memoir and instead of reading the whole thing I will only be reading a little excerpt of it so you can get a taste. Some struggles I faced were decided was when I was deciding what part of my life to write about and what part to share what part not to share. But I think that my piece has come out very well and I hope you all enjoy. Thanks. She was only 17 when I was born. She being my mother. My mother was top of her class with a promising future and an early acceptance to JMU. She had her whole life in front of her until she made a mistake, me. My father, who was 21 at the time I was born, came from a country in South America known as Bolivia. He came to the US on a student visa where he met my mother. I'm not sure what happened after that, but they did their thing and ended up with me. My parents would go on to get married after I was born, and then divorced two, year, two years later. After that, my father left and joined the Marine Corps at the ripe age of 27, making a promise that I will forever have daddy issues. My mother always tells me, you weren't a mistake. Mistakes are things you regret. I don't regret you. You are a surprise, a surprise that changed my life. My name is Isabella Guzman. I'm 16 years old. I was born to a teenage mother and things only got worse from there. History has always been one of my favorite subjects. 
Ever since I was young, I would sit with my Uncle Homer and we would talk about history for hours and hours. He would talk from the Romans to the Nazis. The way he spoke always made his words seem more interesting. History became politics, and I would just listen and be so fascinated. My uncle was a Republican, and I did not agree with him on anything, but he's the reason I'm so passionate. My uncle was never the type of man to say, I love you. He was the type of man who showed me that he loved me by coming to all of my games, plays, choir concerts, and everything else I was involved in because he supported me. It was the kind of love I want to give to other people. As I reflect on him, I smile and I'm filled with joy, but then I'm crushed and brought back down to earth by remembering that he's gone. My uncle passed away this past February. When I found out, I did nothing but cry for a week, and I'm still healing, but slowly. Sometimes I'm not okay with it. I'm not okay that he will never see me graduate and become the woman that I'm destined to be. His death is one that pains my heart and will take time to recover from. Although we never said it, I've always meant it. I love you, Uncle Homer. My life has been nowhere near perfect. I wasn't born into the most privileged home, but into one of the most loving. There have always been ups and downs, and even though there seems to be more downs, the ups have always been worth it. As my sophomore year comes to an end, I reflect on my life up to this point. It feels as though an old chapter of my life is closing and a new one is beginning. So here's to eventually finishing high school, going to college, and to a good adult life. Hey guys, it's Madison. So Roots to me is something that's really influential in your life and has shaped who you are. And something that's really shaped me is that my parents are separated. So I live at two separate houses. And I mean, I've never known them being like together. So this has happened my whole life. So when I would go to daycare, uh, sometimes my mom would drop me off and my dad would pick me up and vice versa. So I'd have to put all of my little belongings like stuffed animals, toys into a bag. And that is, I called it my ladybug bag because it looked like a ladybug. So I decided to draw it realistically and then put all of the different bedrooms I've had or at least the ones I really remember inside the bag like a little dollhouse. So the one on the the two on the left are my mom's and the two on the right are from my dad's. The ones on the bottom the one on the bottom left, the pink one, was when I was 12. I was really obsessed with the color pink. I had a ton of pink stuff. I don't know. And then the one above that is the room at my mom's house now, even though I don't really live there as much. I mostly live at my dad's. And then the biggest one, I think it's it's like in the center, that is my room now at my dad's house. And as I was drawing it, I drew exactly what I saw in my room to kind of show that that's where I live the most. You know, stuff is sprawled out because I use stuff in the room. And then I pulled my bag out of my closet so you could see what I was drawing. And then... The one next to that is a rental we had because we moved. And then the one above that, the last one with like the treadmill and the yoga ball is my old bedroom and my old house. Um, and those three that I just named were at my dad's house. Uh, overall, I really enjoyed making this piece. It was kind of a change of pace because I usually do realism and people. And this doesn't really have either. The bag is realism, but that's a really small portion of the piece. I did go through some struggles. Uh, the pen would bleed a lot when I put marker over it, so it's not as neat as I would want it. And I'm not too good at perspective, so I had to cut out pieces of cardboard, put it in the bag, and take a picture, and then I used that as my reference so that the walls wouldn't look all wonky and weird. And then I tried my best to make everything three-dimensional. Some things are messed up, but they're small things that probably only I notice. But overall, I'm really proud of my piece, considering this isn't what I usually do. But yeah, I hope you guys liked it. Hi, everyone. For this showcase, I wanted to focus on my roots as a dancer. There have been so many people and experiences that have shaped who I am, and I really wanted to highlight them. It actually worked out really well that this showcase ended up being a video because I was able to pull from old photos and videos from growing up dancing as well as hearing from some of the people who've been part of the journey to show how they've all influenced me. The musical theme you will hear throughout is the song Que Sera Sera, which was my first ever dance recital song. 
I'm so grateful for everyone who's been a part of my life and this journey, and I can't wait to see where life takes me next. Please enjoy. I love you all. When I was just a little girl, I asked my mother, what will I be? Will I be pretty? Will I be rich? Here's what she said to me. Que sera, sera. What will be, will be. I am Julia and this is Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, when the girls were little, we had this bedtime ritual. Every night we would say what was the best thing that happened today and what was the worst thing that happened today. And the best would change every day. But the worst, at least for Julia, was always the same. We would say, what was the worst thing that happened today? And she would respond, not, not signing, signing up, up for, for dance, dance class. Classes. So we finally got the hint and signed her up for dance classes and she's never looked back. Never. Julia stepped into my Discover Dance class as a four-year-old. And I remember thinking, wow, this little one has potential. Even at a very young age, Julia demonstrated a love and appreciation for the art of dance. You could always see the happiness on her face and in her eyes every time she moved through the space. There was nothing I liked more than performing. I was always putting on little shows for my classmates or for my family, usually forcing my sister and my cousin to be involved. Plié, relevé. Plié, relevé. Starting when we were about six years old, Julie had this idea to put on dance recitals for our family at our grandparents' house in New York. And these dance recitals were by no means low key. Julie always picked out all of these songs, which normally numbered near 20. And she did all this choreography and staging for all of them also. And it was clear that Julie was, was extremely passionate about dance and teaching even from the young age of six years old. Um, I know that the summer dance recitals inspired her to be the dancer and the teacher that she is today. I love you, Julie. I'm so proud of you. So one of Julie's most um, endearing qualities is that she's constantly dancing. I'm not talking about how she goes to 100 dance classes a week, which she does. I'm talking about how she physically cannot stop herself from moving. Like you could be having a conversation with her, you're sitting at the kitchen table, She's doing plies, tendus. I don't even know what a tendu is, but she's doing it. Here's the thing though. Julie's joy when she's dancing like this constantly is so infectious that other people can't help but join in, which is how I think we got to those 30 song dance recitals every summer. Dancing with other people is totally the best part. I've made my closest friends through dance class. Julie and I have danced together our whole lives and I couldn't have asked for a better classmate to have shared all those years with. We've pushed each other emotionally and physically into the dancers that we are today and the people that we are today, and I'm incredibly thankful for who she is. I've been dancing with her since middle school, and I continue to see how hardworking she is. I'm so grateful for all the moments and memories I've had dancing with her over the past years. In addition to all the friendships I've made through dance, I've been so lucky to have the most amazing and supportive teachers. Julia is one of those dancers who everyone loves to work with. Teachers, students, choreographers. She has amazing talent, an incredible work ethic, intelligence, and a deep physical intuition. She's really gonna go places and I can't wait to see where she ends up. Ever since I've known Julia, her passion for dance, especially ballet, has been clear. Over the last four years of working with her, it has been really awesome to be able to see her grow and appreciate new styles and new ways of moving. Not only does she love performing, she loves taking class, and she also creates movement with depth, and she teaches from her heart. Hi, Miss Julia! Here's Miss Julia! 
I'm so grateful for the people and the moments that have shaped me into the dancer I am today. For my piece, I wanted to focus on the roots and generations in my family. So I decided to perform an old folk song called Uncloudy Day that has been a favorite in my family for at least four generations. I found two recordings that really inspired me to play this song. One is of my great grandfather playing this tune on his harmonica. also have a video of my grandpa and his brothers singing this song. Both of these clips made me feel very connected to my roots and music. I would like to thank my dad and my cousin Sienna for accompanying me in this piece, and another huge thanks to my dad for helping me with all the audio and recording. Thank you.
For my roots showcase, I decided to harken back to my roots as an artist. For this, I decided to create a rendition of my first drawing that I can remember doing, which was a drawing of me in a stroller as a toddler. I did this drawing when I lived in Egypt, which is where I was born. This drawing was very simplistic, so for my newer version of it, I wanted to make it a lot more complex and also add color to it. So for this, I decided to use oil pastels, which I have some experience with, but I chose them because I wanted to get more experience with them and master them a little bit more. So for my color palette, I chose vivid colors and made it a bit more saturated than it would be in real life. I also chose to make the shadows a bit more blue tinted to give it a kind of vintage feel. I did this because my memories of Egypt are very bright and happy. It was a good time in my life. One issue that I struggled with in this showcase was finding reference pictures because I didn't have a picture of me in a stroller by the Nile, which is what my final piece was of. So I had to piece together my reference picture based on photos from the internet, photos from old photo albums that we had around the house, and using my imagination for the background. For my showcase, I wanted to showcase the artistic roots that I get from my family. My mother was an actress, my sister can sing, dance, and act, and my father is a professional musician. My sister and my mother both danced a lot, and they are dancing with me in my showcase. And my father wrote and performed the poem that you hear us dancing to. In the beginning was the womb, and you were surrounded by warmth and comfort and sustenance and sound. Vibrations flowed to you from and through the giver of life, voices and noises, and the ever-present pulse of a heartbeat. That engine of nourishment was your constant companion as cell by cell your body came to be and began a heartbeat of its own. You came to know the cadence of the two combined, infused by music of those pulses intertwined. You learned the framework of a child and its mother, to sense a smaller pulse embraced within another. And because it was the only world you knew, it filled you and it formed you as you grew. So melody and dance are your inheritance from the woman who created and incubated you. And the central fact to which this all pertains is that you were born with rhythm in your veins. Hi, I'm Faith Owens Haywood, a senior in the Fine Arts Academy. For this showcase, I decided to look at my roots within the academy. I looked at all the showcases for my past three years and found the key elements in each piece of art. I then decided to make an animation from those key elements. I also chose the song The Chain by Ingrid Michaelson because it's the song I used to audition for the academy and it's a song about moving on in the world. I'd like to thank lots of people, Alice McNett on piano, Julia Lawton on violin, Leif McCoy on guitar, Declan Leach on drums, and Kate Cummings and Paula Rivera logo on vocals. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the show. Anymore, and if you come. 
the chain from off the door. For this showcase theme of Roots, Paula and I decided to collaborate together. We wanted to make our showcase a tribute to our mothers as they are quite literally our roots. Carly and I wanted to show the relationship between a mother and a daughter and the emotional process of the daughter growing up and leaving home, just like Carly and I will be doing when we're going off to college in the fall. We chose to create a dance with the song Slipping Through My Fingers by ABBA. My mother and I are the vocalists in the video. Throughout the video and the song, you'll be able to see us growing away from our natural roots as we go off to college. Thank you. And, and we hope you enjoy. Home 